What's up everyone? Today we're going to continue talking about PowerShell modules and how we need to include some additional information beyond what we did in the last video where we just created the module file. This time we're going to create a metadata file to go along with our module, just to include additional information about it and make it more like a real PowerShell module. My name is Jeff, this is Jeff Brown Tech. Let's go ahead and get started. Just to recap a little bit, so far we've been writing a custom PowerShell function to export logic app definitions out in Azure. As a way to use this function in our daily task, we created a module file, which is a .psm1 file, and put it out in our module path. So every time we open up a PowerShell terminal, this command is available to us. However, we are missing a metadata file to include additional information about our custom PowerShell module. Let's go through creating that metadata file and to make our module more official. To recap a little bit more, let's take a look at what it looks like when we look at our PowerShell module right now in our terminal. If I were to run git module and we're going to do list available because our module isn't loaded right now, the name of our module is PowerAZ plus and we'll pipe that out to format list. Right now we're missing a description of our module, any type of versioning information, other information include our author and PowerShell version that the module works with. Now you can create your metadata file manually. It is just a hash table with key value pairs inside of it, but PowerShell has a command called new module manifest that you can use to pass information into it and it'll generate the file for you. I'm going to paste in a command here and we'll go through each part of it real quick. As I mentioned, the command is new module manifest. We'll put in a path to the manifest file that we want to create. It should be the same name as your module. So in this case, powerazplus.psd1. I'm currently in my module folder, so I don't need to include any path like that. So we'll create it right here. We'll put in the root module, which is our PSM1 file. Again, it has the same name as our module. We'll put in a module version, an author name, a description. We're going to specify what functions we want to export from the PSM1 file. In this case, we only have one export logic app definition. But you could have helper functions that you maybe don't want to export and make available when someone imports the module. By specifying functions you want to export, you make sure only the functions you want exported and available are there. Finally, you'll specify the PowerShell versions that this module will work with. I did downgrade something from my function to make sure it works with 5.1. In that case, it was this FL statement. I did use a ternary operator, but that's only available in PowerShell 7. Understand, you know, a lot of people do have to use PowerShell 5.1, maybe because of Windows Server or they're in a regulated environment. So I did change this code here just to use a regular IFL statement syntax. There are lots of other parameters that you include in here, but this is a good start to create our file, and then we'll go through it and see what other information is included in it. So let me go ahead and press Enter. And we can see right over here, our PSDN file is created. So let's go and open that and take a look at what is included in here. Has some information generated by me, generated on the date. We have our root module, which we specified as a parameter. We have our module version. We have compatible PS editions that's commented out right now. We do have a GUID. It did generate this GUID for me because you have to uniquely identify every module with author. Company name is unknown right now, so that could have been a parameter I included. So let me go ahead and I'll just put my name in here also as the company. We have a copyright that was automatically created. Here's our description and PowerShell version. When you do have some other fields here that are commented out, name of the PowerShell host required by this module, don't need anything there, PowerShell host version, .NET framework version, lots of things that aren't necessary for what we're doing right now. But as you get more advanced in PowerShell, maybe these become relevant and you would need to specify those here. Continuing on, we have processor architecture, any other required modules that have to be imported before you can use this one, scripts to process, types to process. Actually, looking back at required modules, I might want to include AZ modules because a lot of my functions probably use those. But for right now, we'll just leave that out. As we keep going, we do see the functions to export. It says export logic app definition, so I specified that in our command we ran earlier. If you want to add more to this, I believe it's just a comma separated list and each function should be in quotes. Let's see if that specifies over here. Nope, it does not. We also have command list export. Maybe this is compiled from C sharp, variables, aliases to export. We also then have some private data, 
tags, project URI, license URI, these are going to be important if you want to publish this out to the PowerShell module and include those links there when people are viewing it. We'll probably get to that in a later video. Release notes, anything else like that, again, uploading to the PowerShell gallery, help info URI, and lots of other things. The PSD in one file does contain lots of great metadata, but for our cases, we have the bare minimum that we want to include in here. So let me go ahead and save our file here. We'll bring our terminal back up. And real quick, let's just run import module and put in the name power AC plus. Now, if we run git module, we can see it is listed there right in the middle. We do now have a version and see it's 1.0.0. We have our exported commands and let's just look at the full listing of it. We can see it now has a description and a version for us. So that's really it. That's all you needed to do to add this metadata file to your module. It will be super helpful to maintain versions, include descriptions. Maybe you only want to export certain functions from your PSM1 file. Lots of great stuff there. So moving forward, what I also want to do is I want to publish this out to the PowerShell gallery. I already have a video on that. I gave a talk at the Chicago PowerShell user group a couple of years ago. I'll include a link in the description down below for that and maybe a little card up here. You can go watch that. I go through the whole process of some things you should check before you publish that. But I think in the next video, what I want to do is automate it out in a GitHub repository using GitHub Actions. That way, anytime I complete a PR, I can update the version for it and just have it automatically publish out to the gallery for me. That other video for the Chicago PowerShell user group was doing it manually from the command line, but I'm going to take those same steps and just automate it for me because that's what we do. We're automators. We don't want to do the same thing over and over if we can help it. Anyway, just wanted to finish this out on how to complete a PowerShell module. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.